Hi friends, my name is Radia, and this is my sketchbook. I started the sketchbook in the winter of 2018, and I finished it this summer in 2020. This is just one of the many sketchbooks that I carried throughout my college experience. I attended an art school, the School of Visual Arts here in New York City, and graduated this year with a bachelor's fine arts degree in illustration. This has actually been the second purchase that I've made of this particular sketchbook. I really love it. And the first one that I have is also finished, which I started in my first two years of college, except it's stuck at my studio in SVA and I haven't had the chance to retrieve it since lockdown. So the company that makes this sketchbook is called Handbook Journal Co. This particular series is called Travelogue, and this is the 5x8 inch portrait size. I really like the sketchbook because it's hardbound, uh, that way it's not going to get destroyed in my bag. There's also a little elastic to hold it in place. There's also many, many pages. There's 128 off-white colored pages, and they are 130 GSM or 90 pounds, which is great for light washes of ink or wet media, and also perfect for dry media as well. There's also this bookmark right here so I can mark off which page I was at last and also a little pocket in the back to hold loose sheets of paper. I know there are a lot of artists who have these beautiful, amazing sketchbook with finished illustrations. I am not that person. I use my sketchbook exclusively as a sketchbook. It's pretty messy, it's all over the place, and it's how I get my creativity kind of put down onto paper. What you'll see often is a lot of sketches that are in here uh, that actually have been developed into a final illustration, which I'll have pop up somewhere in the video as I flip through this. This is also a good point to mention that I treat my sketchbook like my safe space. There's a lot of personal work and writing in here that I finally feel comfortable sharing with the rest of the world. And without further ado, let's start this tour. So I am a big fan of putting random things in the end pages of my sketchbook. As you can see, I stick stickers in here. I have my information, stamp things. These are just a part of a tile design of a lino cut book that I made. And these were uh, meant to be a pattern for some end pages. This is the lino cut book. Here are one of the end pages. Here is the other one in a different colorway. These are some sepia pen drawings some acrylic marker testing, and you'll see a lot of this in my sketchbook. Just post-its put over things that I just don't want to look at anymore. It's a good tactic if you draw something and mess it up. That gives you a second chance. These are some ballpoint pen and brush pen drawings. This is something I had printed left over from a project that I decided to write over. This is actually a really cool photo of myself in a restaurant hallway. I just think it's nice to uh, repurpose things that I would otherwise discard or recycle. This is an hourly comic that I worked on. Uh, I inked part of it, but I didn't finish the rest as you can see here. And that's all right. This prompt on the top was for a drawing class, which we made an illustration having to do with yoga and spirituality. Although I didn't pick any of the thumbnails here, uh, it did help me come up with the final piece for the project. Sometimes when I have gaps like this in my sketchbook, I'll actually go back and fill them up with some doodles. So these don't actually have anything to do with that project, but I like to utilize the space. Once again, testing out some pens and new materials. This was a fluorescent crayon highlighter that I was experimenting with that I really liked. Um, and it gave me these really cool, vibrant results. Once again, covering up things that I feel unsatisfied with. This is a graphite drawing that I did of one of my coworkers back when I used to work at an art supply shop. I like to put a piece of tracing paper over graphite drawings just so it doesn't smudge and transfer to other pages on my sketchbook. This is a brush pen drawing that I did of my partner, and this was a little wash test that I did. For me, this was the first time using acrylic wash, and this is the brand that I used. Here I have two thumbnail drawings that ended up being lino cut lock prints in the book that I made. This was the spread. This was a little sketch that I partially inked of my partner and I. I just never got back to inking the rest of it. 
This is where the full development of that Lino Cup book took place, including the title, which I named it uh, Hot Cherries and Liquid Dreams. This, this, and this ended up in the book. This was the title page, then the double page spread, and the other two illustrations that I had thumbnailed. These drawings were ideas for a mock book cover and album cover. These were the ones that actually made it. This was another printed image that I just wrote around with some Posca marker. This is a sketch of my friend Emma when we were sitting at the park. These are some stickers that I just pasted on here. That's how I was feeling. These are some sketches of characters of me and one of my best friends as witches. Uh, with our pets being our familiars, and this ended up being a larger concept for a children's book. These are some graphite drawings of my friends and some cats doing weird things. More of the witches right here. This is a little graphite drawing of my partner. His Instagram handle is snakebone, hence why it's written on the tracing paper. This is a mini comic that I did when I was having a rough time and going through art block. This is another printed image that I painted with the same gouache that I showed from before. It's truly just an experimental thing of seeing how I can layer cut images with paint. Here are some more ink and pencil drawings, some more gouache experimentation with some gel pen from Muji. This is a little watercolor test that I did from a Schmincke watercolor set that I got for myself. So there is a ton of pencil, pen, and ink chaos going on right here. Even I was testing out the security roller that you put over addresses so no one can read it. I really love this portrait that I did of this Bangladeshi woman. This actually has to do with my junior project at SBA, which you'll see developmental sketches of throughout this tour. This is a sketch I did while listening to a song by Claro called Pretty Girl. I didn't like the second sketch that I did, so I put a post-it over it some doodles while I was super tired, some ink drawings of my cat Queenie. Now the next few pages deal with my junior project during my third year at SBA. The narrative that I chose to illustrate was Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This novel touches upon suicide, so if that kind of imagery affects you negatively in any way, I recommend skipping over this part. So the theme for our junior project was location as character. Despite Norwegian Wood taking place in Japan and having Haruki Murakami be a Japanese author, I felt like his writing really resonated with my own culture and background. My family is from Bangladesh and I was born and raised here in New York City. As a South Asian artist, I think there's a lack of representation for a lot of South Asian artwork and artists in the illustration field. I took this opportunity to pitch my idea and why it's so important to have the location swap from Japan to Bangladesh. The narrative revolves around a university student. There's actually a very beautiful university in Taka, which is a city in Bangladesh, so I decided to do some studies of that hall. One of the love interests ends up committing suicide in this novel, so there was an image that I really had to develop through because I didn't want to portray the obvious. These two sketches were meant to be from the rooftop of the university. Here, this is the sketch that I ended up going with, and this was also another sketch that I ended up running with. I was very nervous about my approach to the junior project, but in the end, I made 10 amazing illustrations and nine of them were showcased in the junior show. That's me, and I honestly kicked ass. This was supposed to be a vignette for a children's book illustration class. The prompt was nursery rhymes, so hence cat playing the fiddle, and over here, cow jumping over the moon. This was another composition that I did. Uh, but I ended up using this one. These are some people that I sketched on a subway ride. Some marker and pen sketches of my plants. Here are some more marker, pen, and ink sketches. This is Posca marker. This is some Tombow markers. This is how I feel when I don't make nice work. Here I have some colored pencil swatches. These are water-soluble Karen Dosh colored pencils. You can see what it looks like activated with water, but I decided to do a little bit of experimentation here and there. 
here's the first time you really see a bulk of writing. Uh, these are the same fluorescent highlighters from before, some more pen drawings. Over here I used myself as a study for these pen drawings. This is going back to the children's book illustration class, so I did three double page spreads. I had this be one of the end pages. These were some sketches that just didn't make it, playing around with the manuscript. This was a project for a class where we have to put ourselves and one of our favorite artists into a space. So I decided to choose Tyler the Creator, and it was actually a recreation of a photograph that I saw of him and ASAP Rocky. Here's a drawing of my friend and I and our pets as Sailor Moon characters. These are some Tamagotchi characters painted with Posca markers, and if you couldn't tell, these are key components of my childhood that still influence me to this day. More drawings of friends and pets, all of the plants that I've accidentally killed, a pen drawing that I did of all the plants that are on my wish list that I really hope I own one day. This is a really quick sketch of an outing to the deli during a rainy day. This was meant to be a blueprint for a plant stand that I commissioned Emma to make for me. These are some caladium leaves that I drew and painted with those water-soluble colored pencils. As you can see, this is a prime example of when I don't like things, I just cover it up. So there was actually something underneath here which I just went over with some acrylic markers. And on this side, there was something that I smudged really badly from this pastel. So I covered it up with some black paper and drew on it with white ink. Over here I have more gouache tests. Sometimes as I'm painting I'll come into my sketchbook in blank areas and just swatch the color. Here is some water-soluble graphite and some ink. More of that black paper and white gel pen. Over here there's actually a to-do list of the plants that I needed to repot but behind it is actually the skeleton of a pattern that I made of women and plants. If you see this design here, it's actually in reverse because it was meant to be a rubber stamp, but this was way larger than I needed it to be. This is actually the carved stamp. This was actually a pattern to a birthday hat that I made for my cat, and then I put that in here and drew on top of it. These are more sketches of the women included in the plant pattern. There's a lot going on in the next few pages. It's a lot of switching between different uh, ink nibs and different ink pens. This is more of a visual journal entry right here. Also right here, I made a list of things that happened to me in 2019. This page was drawn with a rapidograph pen. This was a quick drawing exercise for a painting class. So we were given prompts and told to draw the first object that came into mind and then combine these elements into one painting. These were several sketches for the painting that I wanted to do and I decided to go with this composition. These were some of the swatches that I had in gouache. For that painting class, I finally upgraded my acrylic gouache paints to the Holbein Acrylic. One day I spontaneously decided to draw some sneakers, and I thought about the fact that I wore sneakers underneath my traditional garments every time it was a holiday, and how cool it actually looks together. So I wanted to incorporate a lot of Daisy women uh, and some hype beast shoes, and these were the thumbnails that turned into a series of illustrations. Here I was experimenting with some color changing calligraphy ink. This is the ink and it's this beautiful lavender color that kind of switches into this teal in certain areas. On this page I decided to experiment with some of this Dr. P.H. Martin Bombay India ink. I really like how some areas I can dilute it and other areas I can keep it the density it is so I can use it to line my artwork. I really love this cat right here. These were some compositions for that painting class. This is a bit of silkscreen ink on the corner. I was testing the uh, opacity and layering. These two compositions I actually painted. 
these were the color swatches for it. This was basically what I translated my cat into, a black panther. These were some doodles that kind of put, were put together around one of the paintings. Over here I have some pencil drawings, I have some ideas, some more colored pencil work right here. Gel pen drawings of some friends. This is a little colored pencil drawing of me and my partner at the park. We were on the swings. This is my method of keeping track of which colored pencils I own. Every time I go to an art store, I bring my sketchbook with me to make sure that I'm not buying the same or similar color that I already own. I have this sheet of tracing paper just to keep the colors from getting muddy. There's some stuff covered up here because I didn't like it, but here are some of the details that I put into a poster I illustrated for one of the clubs at my school that hosts an art fair every year. Unfortunately, it was canceled for 2020 because, as you may know, we are in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, but one nice thing that I did right before was I visited California, which was my first time getting on a plane. So I did not know how to pack and this is how I was feeling. I got super frustrated and just ended up drawing all the things that I owned in my backpack. Here were some things that I wanted to silk screen. Uh, this is a very stylized Abyssinian cat and I thought these would look cute in an arrangement on a tote bag. This design ended up being a pin. This is some extra silkscreen ink that I had that I just smeared with my finger and then I just drew over with some colored pencil. Here I was trying to draw different types of faces. This is my coworker again. This is her cat. These are some nasturtiums and redwood trees that I drew while I was in California. I got a new pencil case and it was very exciting. I really loved the signs while we were staying in Oakland. I tried to replicate that right here. There's also some seagulls bothering us. These are some doodles of fruits and cats that we met along the way. This is the CCA campus cat named French Fry. These were two pen drawings I did, and this one ended up being a gouache painting. Here I was having fun with various types of media. I was using the Rapidograph pen, some gel pen, acrylic marker, and screen tones on the pants right here, which are actually used in a lot of traditional manga comics. I actually have a fragment of the screen tone pattern in this pocket right here. This is what it looks like up close. There are teeny tiny dots that give it the illusion of grayscale or any type of pattern. This page right here is based off a TikTok dance. I think it's a little silly now, but I really liked drawing the pose and putting in the halftone screen as well as the lettering around it. This part of the sketchbook is when quarantine started happening, so very important to wash hands and wear a mask, still relevant today. This was a comic that I wanted to do about me being from Queens and how Brooklyn is super hype. Honestly, no shade to Brooklyn, all of my friends live there, but Queens deserves a little bit of love. So these were the things that I was doing in quarantine. I was getting back into yoga to keep in shape from staying at home all the time, and I was thinking about cutting my hair. Here I have some experimentation with some gel pens. Here I pulled out my old Sakura watercolors and these iridescent gold watercolors. Here I tested out the strokes of a new brush pen that I got. And this was some walnut ink that I got and wanted to paint with it. Over here, this is the same brush pen as before, but in black and also in this deep blue. These are some doodles that I did with these ridiculously tiny colored pencils I brought from San Francisco. Over here, this is the many attempts for that carved stamp that I made. As you can see, there are many adjustments I had to make, like the ring of the eyes being too thick and smoothing out some of the edges, and I had to stamp and carve and stamp and carve until I got the final result that I liked, which was this one. I really wanted to experiment with more inks, so I bought some more colors of the Dr. P.H. Martin India inks. On this page, I tested the colors of the acrylic markers that I own just to see what it looks like on this paper. This little sketch right here ended up being an illustration for a friend. 
these two cats I wanted to make into stickers. This was a sticker that I did make of my black cat. And then right here, it is being turned into a sticker. This is a drawing that I did based off of the animated series The Midnight Gospel, and it was an episode dealing with ego death. This was a little ink wash drawing that I did of my desk while I was on a FaceTime call. Two tiny little illustrations right here. Uh, testing some pencils that I ordered from CW Enterprise. This was a tiger that I painted, but rendered way too much did not like it, and I covered it up. So some of these spot illustrations were meant to be turned into GIFs, which I actually did, which you can use for Instagram stories, and I believe also Snapchat stories, if you look up my Instagram handle, Knives Meow. So this is the last, but also not last, part of my sketchbook. I picked up the sample of calligraphy ink from my local stationery store and I decided to draw with it with some nib pens. These are some Copic markers that I purchased in quarantine and I wanted to switch up my color palette a little bit. This was a stamp that I wanted to get outsourced so I can use that for my mailers. And this was a friend that I drew while we were at the beach. Now I said this is my last but also not last area of my sketchbook because I do this thing where I also start drawing from the back of the sketchbook. Here is where I go crazy when it comes to testing pens or if my pen is running out of ink, just frantically scribbling with it. Some more areas of pen testing, ugly drawings, don't want to see it. Sometimes I do ink swatches on separate sheets of paper and they end up looking kind of cool. So I decide to just paste them into here. And this is the last area in my sketchbook that you guys get to see. Uh, lots of frustration because I have a lot of pens, a lot of pens that I need to test out if I want to switch up the drawing or if I'm not satisfied with the line weight. This is how I deal with it. So that just about concludes this sketchbook tour. I hope this was inspiring or entertaining in any way. If you liked it, please leave a comment, give this video a like, feel free to subscribe for more sketchbook tours possibly in the future. And I hope this gives you more of a realistic approach because this is what is sustainable for me in terms of maintaining a sketchbook. I have all of my social links attached in the description if you want to follow me on Instagram or take a look at my website or my shop. Thank you for watching and until next time.